Greetings dear learners. So far we have covered the definition of model United Nations conferences and the generalized procedures. Throughout this video segment we will now understand the operational structure of these conferences. We will now start by understanding the internal framework of a conference through their committees and established various actors in this committee setting. Now let's talk about the internal framework. Model UN Conference, just like the United Nations Organization, is a blanket term referring to the entirety of its various subsidiaries. In reality, both the United Nations and Model UN Conferences do not operate as a single entity and are subdivided into various committees and organs that perform all its functions and responsibilities. For the United Nations, these committees are firstly the General Assembly, which has its own six subsidiary organs of TISEC, ECOFIC, SOCUM, and SECPOL, Administrative and Budgetary Committee, along with the Legal Committee. Secondly, Security Council, which is the only committee in the UN to have a veto power for its P5 members of Russia, France, US, UK, and China. A veto vote essentially allows a nation to stop any decision of a committee unilaterally. Thirdly, there is an economic and social council that deals with issues related to international economic and social policies. Apart from this, there are also organizations such as WHO, ILO, UNESCO, among others, which operate under the UNO. Additionally, one important committee that has been added to this list is UNHRC or the Human Rights Council that focuses on the issues related to human rights. A model UN conference essentially follows these committees and incorporates them into its simulation structure. However, it is important to note that a model UN conference is made up of various other types of committee and not just the United Nations committee alone. A model UN setting primarily has all the UN committees, namely the UNGA and subsidiaries, UNSC, UN ECOSOC, UNHRC, among others. Secondly, a model UN conference has all the committees simulating international organizations such as the NATO, the European Union, and the ASEAN, among others. Thirdly, MUNS also organize committees that stimulate national organizations or parliaments such as the US Senate, Lok Sabha or the Duma. Among these committees, each committee can proceed in one or of three ways. Way 1 is a regular procedure where an agenda is allotted to each committee and is discussed and debated by participants throughout the conference and in the end, the committee, according to this mandate, arrives at a set of solutions and suggestions. Way 2 is a historical simulation where a committee follows a slightly different procedure. In this, the agenda of a committee is not a contemplated general topic but a key historical event. This committee, through its discussion, tries to unfold the historical event in real time and tries to bring up new solution or conclusion to the event. Each historical committee follows a freeze date in relation to the new event. No information or events following this freeze date are applicable to the committee and the delegates are not allowed to make the decision in this historical simulation. An example of this can be the second Gulf War with the free state of 20 March 2003. Here, the delegates will base all their arguments on the information before 20 March 2003 and try to either prevent this conflict or decide a new military strategy with an aim to prevent the mistakes that were committed in the real world during this operation. Except for the agenda part and the free state, the rest of a historical simulation committee proceeds in a similar manner as a regular committee arriving at a set of final solutions and suggestions to address the issue at hand. Way 3 is a crisis procedure, where the participant discusses not a static topic as the previous two ways, but an active topic. In this way, a generalized agenda is given to the participants before the committee session. After the committee process begins, the committee is introduced to multiple crises that a participant are required to solve through either joint action or through individual moves. 
these crises act as an update to the overall agenda that develop on the primary agenda of the committee and those updates before them as a response to these crises committees allow participants to draft directives which are actions that individual delegate or a group of delegates are willing to take which are submitted to the moderators the moderators verify the feasibility of action and pass the directive if they feel it is relevant and realistic if not the directives are rejected the entire committee can also come together to pass a single directive as well but in this case the document will be put into a vote It's important to note that the crisis updates in these committees are fictional situations that are inspired by true events of real time. These committees primarily aim to enhance the participants' thinking on the feet, problem-solving capacities, where the participants are expected to make compromise, deals, and negotiation to solve different problems while simultaneously anticipating possible backlash from their directive. It is important to note that these three ways are often mixed and matched by conferences where a crisis committee can have a historical agenda with a free seat or a regular committee can have a crisis situation aimed at giving direction for the committee proceedings. Some committees can also have a fictional agenda and simulation but allow the procedure of regular committee proceedings. Now let's talk about the general structure and actors. In our session so far, we have looked at the model UN conference in a general manner as a group of people coming together, discussing real world problems and simulating formal political meetings and coming up with real time solutions and suggestions. This view is true, but in a generalized sense, in reality, a model UN conference has a specific structure and actors in its simulation. A model UN conference is organized by an organization and is headed by a secretariat. This secretariat is headed by a secretary general who oversees all the operation of a conference. Each conference has multiple committees as discussed previously. Each committee is moderated by a committee dais who are also referred to as the executive board or the presiding officers. These moderators moderate debate and discussion among delegates who represent countries in case of UN or international organization simulation or in the case of committees like national parliament or regional political organization represent portfolio who can be individual people organization political party among others Finally each committee also has an international press team who are tasked to report the happenings in the committee interview delegates on the stand and conduct press meets and generally stimulate the role of the fourth estate in policy making keeping the delegates accountable to the word and decision apart from these members there are also organizing committee members assigned for each committee who aid delegates in procedural matters like passing of the chips operating the projector during the presentation among others Now that we have established the actors of a committee, let's explore these actors more in detail. So, a model United Nations conference is a big scale academic event or a competition that is backed up by an academic organization. These academic organizations are either a student organization or a non-governmental organization, a school or a college which establishes the goals the scale and scope of the conference and help in advertising organizing and certification processes of the conference the organization also selects and appoints a secretariat and a secretary general who heads the secretariat the secretariat has a few important roles and responsibilities which are divided among its selected members The secretariat has a social media team which takes care of promotion and advertising aspects of the conference. Secondly, there is a finance team that focuses on allocation of money to the advertising team, collecting delegate fee, providing direct remuneration and delegate cash rewards. Thirdly, they have an administrative team that takes care of delegates, registration, grievance handling and overall registration of the committee dais and international press members. The secretary general who is generally an experienced model UN participant heads these 
team and coordinates the operation before and during and after the conference. The Secretary General is also an actively involved participant in selection and interviewing process of committee diet and allows each selected applicant their role and committees depending on the conference expectation and needs. The committee diet is made up of three members. The chairperson or the president, the vice chairperson or the vice president and a rapporteur. The chairperson primarily helps moderate the committee debate and reviews and grades delegate performance through a pre-established rubric. This rubric is gained determined by the conference procedure and its goals. The vice chairperson primarily works with the chairperson in moderating the debate, recognizing speakers, motion points and yields. The rapporteur is responsible for the documentation of delegate statement and stances examining the shifts and keeping time for the speeches. However, many conferences choose to have only one chairperson and vice chairperson depending upon the committee's strength. The DICE members of crisis committee are called as crisis directors who are additionally responsible for developing crisis scenarios and updating these crises based on directives sent by delegates. Now that we have established the hierarchical leadership structure of Model UN Conference, let us move on to understand the nucleus of this system, the committees. Each committee operates and is led in discussion by delegates. A delegate represents a portfolio which can be a country, organization, group or an individual depending on the simulation. These portfolios are allocated to them by executive board members depending on the delegate's past experience and the committee requirement. In all these cases, the delegates are expected to represent the portfolio with utmost dedication and accuracy by defending and expanding the position of their respective portfolios, keeping in mind their nation's foreign policy or the individual or organization's belief system in relation to the agenda at hand. Model UN conference participants are expected to excel in areas of negotiation and communication and develop a consensus among a group of delegates representing nations with strong ideology and opposing interests. Delegates who carry out their responsibilities to the best of their ability are encouraged with honors and rewards. These awards are given to the best performers of each committee who are selected by the executive board member and are aimed to create incentive among the delegates for better participation. Now, coming to the role of the international press members, they are assigned a single or a group of committees to cover. They sit throughout the committee, coordinate with the diet members and delegates to seek information and closely observe the debate and discussion reporting on it. This reporting is generally done via on-the-spot notes which are consolidated into a single organized news report and are submitted to the international press head who is tasked with coordinating these reports and publishing them in a conference website or a newsletter. The IP members simulate the role played by the news media in the real world, which is regarded as the fourth estate of the state, keeping the representatives, who in this case are delegates, responsible and accountable for their words, statements, decisions and actions. IP members interview delegates to seek additional clarity on some of the important statements made during the debate and are generally at the end of a conference. On the final day, conduct a press meet. In this press meet, delegates are questioned directly on their more controversial statements and discussion by a panel of IP members that is headed by an IP head. These questions during these press meets are focused on statements made by delegates in the conference and the reports made by the IP members in the committee. The act, these actors of various committees get together and act in coordination with the actors of the conference in the systematic framework of the conference that results in a successful simulation of real-world political conference and in the end, 
provide a great learning experience for the delegate. Now, let us summarize our learning in this segment. A model UN conference operates to subsidiaries called committees that can be UN committees like UNGA, UNSC, UN ECOSOC or UNHRC among others or international organizations such as NATO or can be national or regional parliamentary or political structure like Lok Sabha or US Senate. A committee proceeds in three ways depending on the agenda. One is a regular committee, second is a historical committee with an agenda from the past and a freeze date and the third is a crisis committee with constant updates. A model UN conference is organized by academic organizations such as schools, colleges, NGOs or student groups. These organizations appoint a secretariat that organizes, coordinates and executes a conference. Each committee of a conference is moderated by a committee diet and operated by delegates who represent portfolios and the international press members who stimulate the role of the news media in the real world political stimulation. Thank you dear learners, I hope this video was quite informative.